Hi there, tutors. The private tutoring business is a booming business, but at the same time, it can be quite tough and challenging. It will come to a point where sometimes we may consider quitting the tutoring career. So, before we decide on that, let's talk about the six factors to consider and hopefully that will help you to have a clearer picture on uh, where you want to hit in life. Stay tuned. So the first factor that might make one consider to quit tutoring is that it is very difficult to find students. I can uh, understand, I can relate to that. I've uh, been uh, tutoring for more than 15 years already. I can uh, simply say that uh, at times it is very difficult to find students. And uh, especially if, if you are starting out and uh, as a new tutor, it will be extremely difficult to get many students because you need to have a number of students in order to support your your expenses you may need to pay for rent for shopping and so forth so it can be quite tough if you consider different forms of advertising such as uh, uh, there are so many uh, ways to market ourselves through the internet through distribution of tracks or leaflets and uh, so forth so I actually have a video that talks about how to distribute leaflets or pamphlets to nearby areas and you also have some suggestion on the different mediums of advertising so hopefully that can uh, help you to look at it in a different angle or perspective just to make sure that all the advertising methods has been considered and the thing about advertising is that it is uh, we need to be consistent so sometimes uh, we might come to a situation where we find it very difficult to, you know, we might be waiting for some time and then we are still not getting, getting any students at all. So uh, it is good to be able to consider doing the business. So in terms of advertising, uh, sometimes we just advertise for a few weeks and then we just wait. So when we are looking for students, our job is actually a job hunter. So uh, what I realize is that I need to be consistent. If you are out there consistently every single day, two or three days, three or two or three hours a day, advertising, finding ways to find students, it could be through the website, through the internet, it can be outside going from house to house, going from shop to shop, distributing leaflets nearby my area. So I try to keep busy trying to advertise in a regular basis by, and I find that by being consistent that will help to get the students in and uh, be, sometimes we may need to take some time before we can find some students so what, what would be a good idea is to uh, look for alternate work so uh, I, I can imagine uh, some many years ago when I started tutoring it was not easy and uh, I tried to do some part-time job as a promoter in a supermarket for more than two years and then uh, during that time I get to have a few students and then as time goes by I get more and more students and then after that I just concentrate on private tutoring so it takes time to really get the students some people find it easier but uh, as soon as as long as we, have, that we are consistent in doing our advertisement then there's a higher degree of chance for us to get the student and uh, as a new tutor, maybe we need to plan our budget also, especially when during at the end of the year, we can find that the students may stop when they're going for the big holidays. So during that time, it will be, it will be good to plan ahead and to make sure that we have enough funds so that during the quiet period, we are able to continue to survive. So as a new tutor in order to get students maybe it is good to gain experience by offering free trial lessons and uh, that way we can start to build our experience and hopefully to get uh, paid tuition uh, in terms of payment they can keep on cancelling 
And uh, with that, uh, I actually have a video that talks about uh, setting a term and condition for your tutoring. And uh, by setting some terms and conditions, that can actually protect the tutor from, uh, from this sort of situation. It will look into having a win-win situation with the uh, parent as well as the tutor's interest. And uh, sometimes it is unavoidable, uh, some parents keep on cancelling. So in the video, I actually talk about how to make it fair, not just for the parents, but also for the tutor. Then uh, sometimes we have the situation where the parents are very high with uh, their expectation. They, uh, they are thinking that by tutoring uh, their students, they'll be able to achieve very high results. So the thing is that we cannot guarantee results because it is very subjective. It doesn't mean that one student that we teach, we can help the student to achieve uh, A for the subject. That means that we can achieve the same result for all students. All students are different. They have a different learning curve. Some of them actually need time in order to progress. Some have some difficulty in a certain area. So every student is an individual and because of that it is subjective so if we are in, if we uh, go out and, and tell parents that oh we, it is a guarantee you will see results from a c student to a student within three months so if we put ourselves in that sort of uh, situation we are giving ourselves unneeded pressure and uh, so uh, it is good to communicate with the parents because sometimes they may have uh, some unrealistic expectations. So by communicating with them, we can give them a realistic uh, realization on what is the student's uh, level and uh, what we can do as a tutor to help the student to achieve their level best. So the third factor that one may consider quitting tuition is that they, are, they have no transport. It is too difficult. And uh, they, because of no transport, they might rely on public transport and then they end up uh, arriving at the uh, client's house late many times. And that would cause unnecessary stress to the tutor. So planning, maybe it is just a matter of planning well in advance having a good time management because sometimes we need to consider the traveling time we, we need to uh, give allowance and uh, especially if you are living in a big city uh, like, like we do uh, we may need to take some time to travel to a student's place uh, when I started tutoring I have no car so I have to take uh, hours to travel by bus to a student's place so we need to consider the traffic jam, the traffic conditions and usually we try to aim to arrive at the student's place at least half an hour or more before the lesson just to make sure that we are there uh, on time and that we feel relaxed and confident to conduct the lesson. Another way to consider is to, uh, to have home-based tuition. Probably in our place where we live, we may have a room and we may use that as a, to conduct group tuition because uh, with group tuition, we may need to lower the price but uh, if we can get more students, the money is quite lucrative as well. Yeah, the fourth factor that make it very stressful in, in terms of tutoring is uh, challenging students. It will be perfect that we are uh, in, a, in a situation where the students is really perfect and the students listens very well and very cooperative and the student really invests his or her time to learn the subject. But that's not really the scenario most of the time and uh, we might find that the student may need motivation and then we might find, find that the student is quite tough, they need encouragement so it can be quite stressful to work under those conditions but uh, I actually have another video, I put all the related videos in my description box below and it actually talks about how to deal with difficult students or challenging students and the good news is that uh, with experience, the more we teach different types of students and uh, when we gain more experience, we have more uh, teaching skill, uh, that 
the thing is that as time goes by, it will become easier and it will make us uh, a better communicator and we can uh, be able to communicate with different students at different levels. And uh, it can be challenging, but if we push ahead and not give up, it can only make us stronger as a person. The fifth point is that uh, because of family opposition, sometimes uh, family members may think that, oh, the, to become a tutor, it is not a reputable work, it is unstable, and usually people do it part-time only until they jump to a full-time job and so forth. So because of negative connotations, some uh, parents or families may be concerned that this may not be a good career. I've been doing this for more than 15 years. I have to pay for my bills. I have to pay for rent. And I must say that uh, it's not always easy. It is just like a business. Sometimes uh, things go up. Sometimes uh, things go down. And the thing is that there are many tutors that are successful uh, with this career and they're earning very good income. So... Uh, that is, uh, hopefully, that is uh, something that can inspire you to push on. And, and maybe it is just a matter of communicating with the family member or people that are concerned that this could, this could not be a suitable job. And actually, I have another video that talks about this job itself, uh, the job of a tutor, whether it's a stable job. I'll put the video in the description box below as well. Uh, after Considering these five factors as a tutor, maybe the sixth factor, which is you've been a tutor for a period of time and you find that it is just not my thing and uh, you're not that interested in the job, you have done that and uh, you find that the job is uh, not that interesting you may be uh, not uh, that excited about the odd hours of working and uh, it's just not your thing. So then it is time to move ahead. So uh, maybe uh, it would be suggested to go to the beach or to a quiet area, into the mountains or somewhere peaceful, tranquil, and really think deeply that uh, if this is really not my thing, what is something else that I'm passionate about? So uh, each person have to make his own decision. My only suggestion before doing that is to make sure that you have enough funds to uh, that you have enough uh, fun, you have enough emergency fund to survive for some time before you find another job that you are passionate about. So hopefully these six factors will help you to decide whether uh, you want to quit or not quit and don't give up and keep continuing. So hopefully I've covered uh, most of the uh, objections and if you find that there's anything that I did not cover, uh, please let me know in the comment box below and uh, please share, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.